We saw spires and towers, and a dreamlike castle through rolling hills, twisting rivers and dense forests. We approached, but were pushed back by strong winds, forced to land in shallow water along the shore. From the sky we saw an island only a few thousand feet across, but from the ground there is an entire world inside. The Scottish island of Pabe has long been of interest to the Authority. AEDF satellites have registered strange energy readings there, signifying a level of weakened reality. The island is home only to fantasy author Randolph Gowering, who is composing the final work in his beloved Care Ashland series, a monumental fantasy novel and its greatest to date. After leaving the island to meet with its publisher, Gowering suffers a fatal stroke. In an instant, Pabe is transformed into a place straight out of Care Ashland. Technology has no place on the island, only the magic items and fantastical gadgets carried by its many inhabitants. The magical beings who inhabit the island cannot leave, but their supernatural treasures are ripe for the taking. With tactical gear and high-tech support rendered useless, Authority security is forced to adapt. The twisting castle of dreams looms in the distance. Wizards, witches, elves and alike populate the lands. As the island creates the missing conclusion to the Care Ashland series, the Authority hurries to investigate and take what it can before the last page is written and the book is closed at the end of the decade. The Current State of Care Ashland OAS Fantasy Literature Working Group for general issue. Note, physical copies of this document hand-inscribed on vellum or papyrus are available for personnel who are required to operate within the bounds of the Care Ashland Anomaly. If you're cleared for this document, it means you're somehow involved in the utter chaos surrounding the Pabe Island incident, and the subsequent formation of a semi-extra-dimensional fantasy kingdom in its place. Given the apparently literary origins of the Pocket Dimension, the OAS has made a detailed survey of Gowring's previous works in the Care Ashland series, in the hopes of providing some general context for what, exactly, Care Ashland represents as a geographical area. More detailed plot analysis of the series is widely publicly accessible. We are including book cover glosses and previews from the released and promised volumes of the series to provide a general analysis of the scope of the plot. The Novels Randolph Gowring has produced 36 novels since the release of its first, Spelltaker, in 1978. While different series he has produced, notably its popular Sands of Glass, Voice of Iron books, which have received several film adaptations, do not share a common storyline or canon. They maintain an internally consistent magical system, and are implied to exist on different continents in the same world. The Care Ashland series, his latest, was intended to cover six books. The first five have been released publicly worldwide, to substantial critical and fan acclaim in the English-speaking world, and at the time of writing, a television adaptation of the first volume is in production. Volume 1 Triumph of the Empirical The Empirical clans of humanity have long served the ancient and decadent Spire Elves, whose reign over the land of Kara Ashland from their capital and the Castle of Dreams has grown corrupt and cruel. In a Spire Elf University, overworked mage professor Jetta Malaka stumbles across the discovery that will revolutionize magic on the island unaware that he is about to set in motion events that will destroy civilization as he knows it. Volume 2 The Source of Magic Jeddah Malakas' brilliant but naive attempt to control the source of magic has failed, and a foul corruption spreads across Care Ashland. As the Spire Elves turn against their former human allies, Malaka works desperately to undo what he has created. In the distant Ashwoods, however, those Spire-Earths worst afflicted by his experiment are plotting a new order, one that will end the Spire-Elves for good. Volume 3 Sword of Prophecy Kara Ashland is at war. The Ashen folk advanced against the ruins of the Spire-Elf Empire, while the Orcish Dominarchy and the Underguild of the Dwarves make their own place for control of the increasingly corrupt Castle of Dreams. And far off into the hinterlands, 
unassuming fisherman's apprentice Hassan Maza makes a discovery that might just end the war. Volume 4 The Underguild Rebellion Hassan Maza and his band of unlikely heroes have done the impossible, brokered an uneasy peace between the Rampage and Dominarchy and the remains of the Spire Elves. As he sets his eye on the Castle of Dreams, however, dark tidings arrive from Underheim. The trade families of the Underguild are in open civil war. Volume 5 The Caves of Crystal Hassan Maza and his new bride Kalith of Mistwood find themselves on an unlikely honeymoon. The Ashen Folk seek peace, as the corruption twists their underground kingdom to the breaking point. In the crystal caves of the Deep Refuge, Kalith navigates the nightmare that is Ashen Folk politics, while Hassan makes a discovery about his hated enemies that will shake his beliefs to the core. Volume 6 Castle of Dreams Randolph Gowring has as of yet refused to divulge major plot points for the long-awaited final volume in the series, save that it will involve Hassan and Kayla's perilous journey to the Castle of Dreams to heal the source of magic, and that it will conclusively resolve plot threads related to the characters of Garrett Heliodor, Solkoth of Bitterfield, and Meg Heck Blood Risen, introduced in previous volumes. The Island Assuming that the current geopolitical state of the island is roughly approximate to the books, the OASFLWG assumes the following. Due to the experimentation of a human society called the Empirical Clans, the source of magic, which regulates reality in Care Ashland, have been irrevocably damaged. The Empire of the Spire Elves, who previously controlled the source, responded to this catastrophic event by splintering into two warring factions. The Ashen Folk, an immigrant population in the Northern Spire or Territories, have declared independence, and have been fighting a bitter war of rebellion against the Empire ever since. It is believed that the damage to the Source has caused permanent and irrevocable biological and psychological changes to them. The Empire has wasted its energies fighting the Ashen Folk, and conducting brutal ethnic cleansing against the Empiricals resulting in the extinction of the majority of the human population on the island. Simultaneously, the Empire has been confronted by the breakaway of the independent Duchy of the Mistwood, an organized slave rebellion among the orc species calling itself the Dominarchy, and increasing tension with the oligarchy under guild trader states. If the literary plot of the Kerr Ashland series is being followed, somewhere on the island, an archetypal hero wielding an artifact plot device called the Sword of Prophecy is currently in the middle stages of a quest to bring peace to the land and restore the source. The FLWG would like to clarify, however, that there is increasing evidence that the situation on the island is no longer properly following the plot of the original novels, and that conditions on the ground may not match the above. Notably, reports are spreading that the hero Hassan Maza may have suffered a fatal injury during a critical plot point of Volume 6, Castle of Dreams. The hero lunges, the Sword of Prophecy in his hand, alive with runic fire. His opponent assumes an ancient elven dueling stance, features twisted into a mask of fear and hatred. In the brief moment before their blades touch, there is a ripping, as of torn threads and pages. Hassan, no! So dies the hero. Known Locations Note that the following list is very much incomplete, and even cursory reconnaissance of the Care Ashland Anomaly has revealed substantial differences between information derived from the books and officially published maps. Locations Discovered Occupied by Authority Forces The following locations have been charted by Authority Exploratory Personnel, and do not match with pre-established locations from the literary canon. OL Site CA Camp Cranock The current Authority base of operations near the Beach of Beginnings, built entirely from local materials. Palisades and earthworks provide some protection from roving magical beasts. Pages End Unstable areas of literary reality, characterized by marked inconsistencies with book locations, spatial distortions, inexplicable writing, and strong smells of ink and paper.
Incoherent spaces. Areas of incoherence and inconsistent reality. Objects, landmarks, and creatures from across Gowring's novels appear at random, typically never seen again. Lingering in these spaces is extremely unsafe. The Corrupted Lands Former capital province of the Empire of the Spire Elves, now twisted and damaged by the corruption. A dangerous battlefield full of swamp and thick forest, populated by monsters, magical anomalies, and roving ashen folk and spire war parties. The Castle of Dreams The former capital of the Spire Elves, now a ruined and twisted monstrosity that may or may not be a single intelligent entity, contains the source of magic. The Nightmare Road The remains of the only intact Spire Elf Road through the Corrupted Lands, fought over constantly by the Elves and Ashen Folk. Watcher's Rest A half-destroyed spire occupied by Spire Elf forces, the main staging area for Elven expeditions into the Corrupted Lands. The Ashwood The volcanic jungle inhabited by the Ashen Folk, formerly part of the Spire Empire dominated by huge caves and cooled magma chambers. The Deep Refuge The deepest portion of the cage beneath the Ashwood, the main seat of Ashen Folk civilization, though it is rumored that ancient things live in their depths. The Lord of Ash A semi-active volcano, which gives the Ashwood its name, and its constant coating of volcanic soot. The Old Observatory an ancient spire observatory built to monitor the Lord of Ash and warn of upcoming eruptions, now occupied by the Ashen Folk. The Night Glow A chain of volcanic mountains along the northern border of the Corrupted Lands, so named for its near-continuous lava flows and lakes of boiling sulfur. Worm Spear A broken spire once carved in the shape of a dragon, now in use by the Ashen Folk as a naval base. Under High Mountains, a more geologically stable mountain range that extends to the east of the Nightglow, known for its incredible mineral wealth, inhabited by the Dwarven Underguilds. The Great Marshes, a sprawling wetland on the eastern border of the Corrupted Lands, inhabited mainly by bands of Empirical Clan refugees and the occasional Underguild trader. The Moldering Spire, a collapsed spire on the edges of the Great Marshes rumored to be inhabited by evil spirits. The Eye of God A peculiar eye-shaped crater on the edge of the Great Marshes, believed by locals to possess magical properties. The Beach of Beginnings A mundane beach inhabited by small human villages, notable as the location of an ancient and half-forgotten prophecy. All authority attempts to land elsewhere on the island have instead been redirected to this area by unknown means. Wethir, a vast steppe plain, once the breadbasket of the Spire Elf Empire, but now controlled by the roving nomads of the Orc Dominarchy. To its east lies the Bay of Wethir, once the seat of human power. The Siren Coves, rocky reef-covered shorelines covered in caves, which are inhabited by predatory sirens. The presence of hundreds of ancient shipwrecks makes this coast an inviting, if dangerous, target for treasure hunters. The Thrall Spike An abandoned spire, captured by the orcs during the Corrupting Wars. Now the de facto capital of the Dominarchy. Barharo, Ellenhall, Briss. Former empirical cities, destroyed by the orcs and the Spire Elves during the early days of the Corrupting Wars. The Spirelands the ancient and glorious empire of the Spire Elves, now fallen into decay, dominated by ruined spires, massive magical towers that once contained whole cities. Mistwood, a temperate rainforest and semi-independent duchy of the Spire Elves. Thievesport, the wealthiest city-state within the Mistwood and seat of the Duke of the Mists, known for its large human ghettos. The Desert a great expanse of seemingly endless sand, rumored to contain ancient and powerful magical cities which are forever hidden by sandstorms and mirages. The Dragon's Graveyard One of few navigable points within the desert, an ancient mountain of fossilized dragon skeletons protected by mystical forces. 
Extracts from Anomaly and Counterbriefing The following is a selection from an initial OAS analysis briefing on the nature of the Kerr Ashland Anomaly and its effects on further research and exploration. Alright, the pamphlets you received in the briefing package yesterday explain all this in more detail, but we'll go over it again. The projected energy field surrounding the island forces away certain artificial materials, regardless of scale and exact composition. By certain artificial materials, we mean almost all petroleum derivatives, plastics and everything but natural rubber are right out, plus certain ceramic materials, carbon fiber composites, and some more exotic metal alloys. You could be wearing polyester undies under a cotton uniform and the field would blast them off along with your pants. Unfortunately, the same applies to contact lenses, certain kinds of tooth filling, and pacemakers. If you've got medical implants of any kind, you're not visiting the island. The same energy field also has a disruptive effect on a large swath of the electromagnetic spectrum. You can bring handcrafted radios in, but they'll have an effective range of a few meters. The guys at ProLab put in a lot of work forging these items with only basic metals. None of them worked. Those maniacs managed to create muskets, gunpowder, and a combustion engine that could be brought past the field, but none of it was worth a damn once we brought it on the island. Most chemical explosives simply won't light. Most guns fail to pass through the field, but ammo doesn't work anyway. You want to shoot something? I hope you're good with a crossbow or a sling. The island is only a couple of kilometers across in the real world, but once you're on it, it's about 200 times that size. Don't enter unless you're equipped for a long walk. There's also a massive desert somewhere, but we're really not sure where. It's either on the east or west. You'll only ever stumble across it. The official map of Kerr Ashland, drawn by Randolph Gowering, printed in the softcover edition of Volumes 1-3. The new map of Kerr Ashland, released in the hardcover editions of Volume 3 and all subsequent printings of earlier volumes. The unattributed new map, released with Volume 3, remains divisive among fans. While many hold that it is a superior piece of fictional cartography to the black and white map included in the original softcover printings, others hold that the alterations it made to Kerr Ashland's geography are non-canonical. While alive, Gowring refused to confirm which map is correct, furthering endless fan debate and argument. Note that neither map entirely matches conditions observed on the ground in the Kerr Ashland anomaly. ASF swapped their guns in Kevlar for plate and rough spun cloth sourced from a dozen legacy Octorita suppliers. Camp Cronach resembles a renaissance fair at times, albeit one with deadly serious intent. The trails to certain landmarks are coherent, but still unsafe. A waykeeper hoists his light. A caravan marches through a fictional forest. An ASF sergeant was trapped in the corrupted forest for some time with one of the proud, recalcitrant Spire Elves. Their mutual survival provided an opening for authority diplomacy in the Spirelands to obtain powerful artifacts. The sergeant expressed his doubts over the humanity, the realness, of these literary creatures of Kerr Ashland. She seemed real. Following their traipse through the corrupted forest, diplomatic channels were opened between the authority and the Spire from which the Elf hailed. Here a well-coiffed diplomat negotiates for artifacts. The escorts, in the finest tradition of bored grunts, talk and banter around the perimeter. Our organization was founded by magicians and alchemists, mystics and zealots. We feel, not without justification, that we have moved beyond them, transcended their limits, and yet here we are, digging deep into our doctrines for the fantastical things we once sought to root out. Thank you.